Hi folks, welcome to Greg's Workshop. I'm Greg, and today we're going to be building the floor for the shed. Welcome to episode three. We're going to frame up the floor using pressure treated two by sixes on 24 inch centers. The span between the inside of the faces of the foundation is a little over seven feet. That's short enough that we can use two by sixes on 24s, especially because of the decking we're going to use. For the actual floor surface, I'm going to use this two by six tongue and groove product. This is uh, hemlock fir. It's untreated, but it is kiln dried. It's nice and light. Um, it has two faces. It has a flat face, which is going to be the top and the floor its surface. And then it has a face with a chamfered edge or two chamfered edges rather. Uh, this is the one that's going to go down. I don't want this untreated wood exposed to the air underneath the shed. I don't want it to wick moisture and, and rot. Uh, so we're going to paint it. I'm going to put one coat of kills and two coats of porch and deck on the bottom sides here. Then we're going to flip it over, do the same on the top. The reason I'm pre-painting the top or the floor surface is because the porch and deck paint or porch and patio paint requires uh, at least 50 degrees and it's not going to be 50 degrees for a while. So we'll get it pre-painted, get it installed, probably throw another coat over the top uh, in the springtime when it warms up. Let's get started. An important thing to know about this product is that it, even though it says it's two by six, that's the overall dimension. So that's from the outside of the groove to the edge of the tongue. The actual face, the exposed part, the part that you need to do your math on, is only about five inches wide, five and an eighth, give or take. So in this instance, if it was full five and a half, I would have only needed 18 sheets or 18 pieces. This time, uh, because it's shorter, I need 19 and a half. Uh, so I got 20, might be able to fudge it at 19 with that extra eighth of an inch on every board. We'll see. The first thing we're going to do is spread out a vapor barrier of 6 mil clear plastic. And we're going to put some gravel on top. The gravel isn't really necessary uh, for anything, it's just there to keep the plastic down to keep it from blowing away. Jack was pretty involved in this process. He's really enjoying the shed build and all the fun things and playtime that go with it. Next comes the gravel. I'm using round rock pea gravel, nice and washed. I don't want any fines in there to, to allow weed seeds to germinate. You can see Jack's pretty excited about this part. Jack's excitement was unabated with each successive load. My wife even came out to help spread gravel. Such a happy little boy. Jack saw me screeding the gravel. He picked up a 2x4, came over, and got to work. Quick review of where we're at. Got the gravel spread yesterday. Um, today I put in these uh, pieces of synthetic decking front and back to keep the, the uh, gravel from falling out and give me a nice clean edge to mow and weed eat against. This will eventually have grass again. I uh, put up uh, one rim joist and sill plate. Um, 
it was early in the morning, there wasn't enough light to film, plus I wanted to get the kinks worked out before I recorded it. So, let's do the other side. So the first thing we're going to do is mark our projections. Uh, projections through the wood. We have five of them on this side. We have four of these anchor bolts and we have this electrical conduit. So we've got it nice and flush against the edge of the foundation here. Always start at the same edge on both sides. This lumber can sometimes be a little bit too long. I've had them 12 and a half, 12 and a quarter. Uh, these happen to be 12, so we're good, but uh, be sure and check that. Always start from the same side. So first projection, I'm gonna mark center line, mark all the rest. You want to be sure and mark where it is on the bottom of the bolt. So this bolt is canned a little bit because I didn't put it in straight. Uh, so I have to make sure and mark where the final hole is going to be and then over drill it. Next, we're going to take the square. We're going to measure again from the outside face of the foundation to the center. So we get our center line of that mark or of that penetration, which is about two and a half. Come over here. Come back two and a half. There we go. So now we're going to set it in and uh, make sure everything fits. I drilled all the holes a little oversized so we have some room to get it squared up. Looks like it fits pretty well. Yeah. So next is to put on the rim joist. I'm using four inch deck screws to secure the mud sill to the rim joist. Nice. I've cut the first two floor joists. They're going to go on the ends. Get those put into position. I'm going to secure them with two screws on each end. Then get everything squared up. Once the floor, once the floor is squared up, tighten down the nuts. Uh, then we can nail them off and carry on. Now I'm going to be checking and adjusting for square. I have this back one securely bolted down. That's going to be our, our basis for measurement. We're going to do corner to corner. If anything needs to move, it'll be the front one up here. Uh, let's get it started. One seventy three and three eighths. And 173, so we're pretty close. I just need to make a slight adjustment. Art needs to come this way. One seventy three and three sixteenths. Seventy three and an eighth. It's pretty close. I think we'll call it good. Next step is to mark out the joist locations. Eagle eyed viewers will note that I'm marking out 16 inch centers, not the 24s that I previously stated. I decided to throw in a few extra 2x6s for extra strength. Because extra strength is good, right? 
There's something important to note when you're using pressure treated lumber. When you cut the end off, you'll have exposed wood that isn't actually treated. So you need to go to your local hardware store or big box store and find some wood treatment to paint that in so that it doesn't rot. You'll note here that I'm checking for crown. If your wood has any crown, you want the crown up so that as the load is placed on it, it will flatten out. I make sure to get each joist properly aligned and squared up before I nail it off. I'm using 3 inch galvanized ring shank nails. Ring shank nails, uh, well they have rings around the shank and so the wood fibers grab that and it doesn't pull out quite as easy. Alright, so I've got my car deck in here. I've got the first six boards. This stuff varies a little bit. I tried to, to pick through it as best, best as I could. I got a lot of straight pieces so we're starting off with that first six good straight pieces. We're going to get about 30 inches out and we're going to put blocking in the middle between all these joists so they don't roll under load and we'll continue with the car decking. In the middle is where I want to put the stuff that's maybe a little warped. I'll have a good base here uh, to pull against to get it to get it you know straight and flush and flat. Uh, fastening schedule is going to be uh, ring shank galvanized nails along this rim joist and then going forward, it's going to be a four inch deck screw coming in at an angle. I don't really want exposed fastenings. I think this will work. If it doesn't work, I can just come back later and hit it with uh, ring shank nails. So let's get it started. When putting fastenings into treated wood, it's important to use the right fastenings. They'll either be ACQ rated or ACQ certified. Generally, that will be nails that are hot dip galvanized or coated deck screws. Forgot to hit record uh, before I put the blocking in. You can see the blocking's in. It's staggered. Snap a line down the middle, one on one side, one on the other, back and forth. Uh, there's slight variation. They should be theoretically the same, but as the, the joist bow a little bit, they'll be a little bit different. So you have to measure each one. Um, that'll just help keep the joist from rolling. So if it gets one joist gets a point load in the middle, it can kind of roll and sag. That way it'll, uh, won't roll and it'll transfer that load to the other joist as well, along with car decking. Uh, this is probably going to be the most overbuilt shed on YouTube. I'm okay with that. Something I hadn't anticipated. These are kind of hard to get perfectly flush. I've been having to use these pipe clamps. Uh, they're 36 inches uh, of pipe. Uh, that's not enough. I need to go to the store and get uh, two 10 foot sticks so I can continue on and finish up. Be back in a minute. Putting in this car decking took a lot more time and was a lot more work than it would have been to just throw down three sheets of tongue and groove plywood. I think it'll be worth it in the end though to have a stronger floor and a stronger shed. And just like that, we have a floor got away with doing 19 came right to the edge there's just the slightest overhang I'll trim that off uh, there's about a, a quarter to and a half inch of overhang on that side I'll need to trim off uh, if you remember me saying that sometimes the boards aren't exactly the length they say these were a little bit more than 12 feet um, we're only off maybe a half an inch overall here on the edge um, you know the boards aren't manufactured super super tight tolerances so that's okay so I'm gonna get this covered up uh, the next episode, we're going to frame up the shed. Folks, if you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell to get notified of new videos every Saturday morning, and I'll see you next week on Greg's Workshop. And I put thumbs up. You did put thumbs up. Good job, buddy. <laughs>